from Time Magazine, February 8, 1999. She says the Pope is Christ's representative on earth today. He is what distinguishes me from other Christians who do not have a Pope. Then later on, she states, quote, being in his presence, being in the Pope's presence, would be being in the presence of the most spiritual being that exists on earth. If the Pope said to me, hi, Betty, I would burst into tears. Friends, he beats all of the Hollywood uh, and Broadway celebrities we could ever uh, imagine. Well, also here's from a Christian newspaper, Christian News, February 15th, 1999, page 7. A big story about the papal visit of 1999 to St. Louis, Missouri. And they had a, not only did they have these tens of thousands of people out, same 100,000 in fact in all, there in St. Louis, but there were 2,000 that had special invitations to come to a papal prayer service. I'll read to you very quickly what it says here. Among the people there, there were Jews and Muslims. Of course, there were Catholics too. There was uh, Cardinal Francis George of Chicago, Cardinal Roger Mahoney of Los Angeles, James Hickey of Washington, Cardinal Bernard Law of Washington, uh, excuse me, Boston. There was William Keeler of Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore. There was John J. O'Connor of New York, the Cardinal from New York was there. Uh, so many people were there. Let me read what, oh, oh, by the way, Vice President Al Gore and his wife Tipper were there. The governor of the state of uh, uh, Missouri was there. U.S. Representative Dick Gephardt goes on and on. Of course, Anheuser-Busch of the Bush Beer Company was there. Former Senator John Danforth, by the way, a 33rd degree Mason, was there. Baseball legend Stan Musial was there. He goes on and on. It also says, though, listen to this, my friends, 90 interfaith representatives were at the papal prayer service. They prayed together. Among them included, and I'm going to read this right from this newspaper, including leaders of the Protestant, Muslim, Mormon, or Latter-day Saints, Buddhist, Eastern Orthodox, Confucianism, and Hindu faiths. The Pope said he was, quote, pleased that distinguished members of other churches and ecclesiastical communities had joined him in evening prayer. With hope and confidence, said the Pope, we can continue to work together to realize the Lord's desire that they may all be one. Wow. Working together that they may all be one. Well, of course, the Lord Jesus meant that all Christians who believed in Him as Lord and Savior would be one. That was Jesus' prayer to the Father. But the Pope is saying that this is what Jesus was praying, and he's using this as an example to say that the Protestants, the Muslims, the Mormons, the Buddhists, the Eastern Orthodox, the Confucianists, and the Hindus, we're all striving to be as one. By the way, a Jewish rabbi made history. Here's from another edition of Christian News newspaper. Rabbi makes history by reading at papal prayer service. See, a number of the uh, these false religious liter, uh, leaders read there uh, and, and did various parts of the service. Now, many people, of course, look at this and say, isn't the Pope swell? Isn't he wonderful? But others say, could this be a sign that this Pope is not only wrong, but evil? There are some who say the Pope is the very Antichrist. Well, Martin Luther said that. John Knox, many of the Protestant reformers said that. Many people still say that today. Somebody sent me this little book that why Protestants, why Catholics should Christians unite. Very interesting. I want to show you. They mentioned Revelation uh, 13, where it says that the number of the beast, the beast is a man, and his number is 666. And they say, and they quote, by the way, from our Sunday visitor, a Catholic weekly magazine, as far back as April 18th, 1915, that the inside the Pope's mitre or his crown are these words, vicarious filia die, which is Latin for vicar of the Son of God. And so a name of the Pope given to him and actually inscribed in one of his crowns, this triple crown, in fact, is the name Vicarious Filiae died. And what these people did was to look for 
the numbering. They look in the Latin numbering system, the Greek and the Roman from Hebron. And in every case, vicarious filiae die came up to the number 666, which is quite a fascinating. Well, I want to take you on a little tour, if I could. We're going to be looking at where the Pope stands in terms of these other religions, including Eastern religions, Native religions, African witch doctors, Protestants, Jews, Muslims, Hindus. I'm going to give you pictorial proof that the Pope has been around the world endorsing, approving these religions. Later on, we're going to discover the reason why. Here, for example, is a, a photo of the Pope in a, a Papua New Guinea in 1984. Notice the woman there. She has her breasts bared. A semi-nude female is reading the epistle at the Pope's Mass. The Pope looks at the camera like, uh, he's uh, uh, as if to say, hey, don't take a picture of this, guys. Well, there it is. Here we see a tribal ceremony in the Pope's honor when the Pope visited the island of Fiji in the South Pacific. Here again at the top, and by the way, these are from the book uh, Peter Lovest Thou Me by Abbey LaRue. Here is a picture of the Pope in Fiji at the top, and then below an Indian chief from the United States invokes the great spirit of the grand spirit in front of Pope John Paul II. I think I know the name of the great spirit, and it's not God. Well, here we have the Pope being presented by Indians with a sweet herb and with a feather, a blessed feather. Here again, we have a fetish or an idol being given to him in honor of the Pope's efforts toward peace. Here is the Pope at Assisi, Italy, in a most amazing meeting in 1986. You'll notice the various leaders, the Pope, by uh, Greek uh, Orthodox Archbishop uh, Methodius. He's also standing beside the Dalai Lama of Tibetan Buddhism, who calls himself a god on earth, and others. There's also the Archbishop of the Anglican Faith, the Church of England, Mr. Runcie. Now, at Assisi, and this was, by the way, in Assisi, Italy, the Pope also allowed the various religions to have their own services and to use Catholic basilicas and churches for these services. Here are the prayers of the Muslims at Assisi. Here is the prayer of animist Africans at Assisi, tribal witch doctor people. Here's some uh, Native Americans or Indians from the United States meeting on the, uh, at Assisi at the cathedral there, fixing to go in and have their little worship service. Here's the prayer of the Japanese Shintoists, who of course believe that their ancestors are gods. And below is a very interesting photo. We'll show you more on this in some moving pictures a little, little bit later on. This is the prayer of the disciples of the Dalai Lama as he installs a little statuette of the Buddha on the altar of the church, the Catholic church <laughs> at Assisi in Italy. With the Pope's blessing, they had a Buddhist ritual right there on the altar. Here's some more pictures. There's the Dalai Lama approaching to place his little statue of Buddha on the Catholic altar. And there below is the altar all set up with the Dalai Lama giving his blessings to Lord Buddha. Here we have, of course, the Pope meeting with the Dalai Lama back in 1986. And the Dalai Lama overcome with joy at meeting this great religious and spiritual leader, grabbed him and hugged him. It's all very touching. Now, you know, there are a lot of Catholics themselves that are not too happy about this state of affairs. And these Catholics have written me letters, they've sent me books, they've sent me videos, and they've said, text Mars, please, even though you're a Protestant, even though you're not of the Catholic faith, please expose the fact that the Pope is not Catholic. <laughs> well, that was a shocking thing to get letters and, and, and pleas from Catholics, email and other things, begging me to expose their own so-called Holy Father. They've also sent me much material along these lines. Here's a book by 
Catholic woman, Mary Ball Martinez, the undermining of the Catholic Church. And she has some incredible things to say in here about Assisi. Here is the Catholic World Report, a magazine. They ask the question, will God hear? John Paul II invites world religious leaders to a day of prayer for peace in Assisi. But will God even hear these prayers? I think it's a pretty legitimate question. And this is put out by Catholics. So we're not bashing Catholics. I'm doing this at the request of Catholics. They want to know. Is this man of the devil or of God? We're going to get to some answers. Here's a Catholic organization that has a picture of their, what they call their mother, Mary, sobbing. Out of the rocks in some wilderness. Why? In this magazine called A Voice Crying in the Wilderness, this Catholic group says that Mary is crying because of the Pope's apostasy and his false teachings. Here, another edition of this very same magazine. And Mother Mary is reported as telling the Catholics in some apparition, and I do not believe in those, but I'm just telling you what these Catholics have told me, especially the Catholic man that sent me this, that Mary in one apparition told the faithful, quote, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. Wow, pretty shocking, isn't it? Here's one of the best books I've seen on the subject, Peter, Lovest Thou Me, by a French clergyman, he's Catholic the Abbey Daniel LaRue. He says, John Paul II, Pope of tradition or Pope of revolution. Then we have Father, I don't call him Father, the Bible says call no man Father, but that's what he calls himself. Two books by Father Johannes Dormann. All about, and he quotes the Pope extensively, it's a very theological treatise or book, about Pope John Paul II's theological journey. Why is the Pope in apparent apostasy? He attempts to answer that question. Here is yet a second volume by the same author, again, Catholics. Let's look at what these Catholic ladies and gentlemen are calling the apostasy, even the satanic behavior of this Pope. Here, for example, from End Time Magazine is a picture of the Pope. And here again with a Buddhist monk. Here from Catholic World Report, February 1995, John Paul II meets with Buddhist monks in Bangkok. This is a very interesting photo. Here is Pope John Paul II meeting with the head Buddhist, the leader of the Buddhist sect in Bangkok, Thailand. Sitting to his right is the king of Thailand, and there, sitting even higher than the Pope is the Buddhist leader. And by the way, I have a film clip of this in which the Pope actually bows down to the Buddhist. Somehow, my friends, I just can't see the Apostle Paul bowing down to the false gods. He said the idols they worship are devils. But that was the Apostle Paul. We now have Pope John Paul II. Here from the Christian newspaper, November 16, 1998, page 2, a little item that says, Vatican seeks ties with Hindus. I don't have time to read that, but let me tell you, seeking ties is one thing. Taking the mark of Shiva, the great uh, Brahman god of the Hindus is yet another thing. And in this shocking, absolutely shocking and disgusting photo, when he visited Bombay in India, John Paul II received what I believe is the mark of the beast in his forehead. That's right, they put them some of that Hindu paste. You've probably seen it on many Hindu gurus and the women's right at their forehead over the third eye according to the New Age movement. And there is the Pope willingly accepting this mark of Shiva, the Hindu god, in his forehead. My friends, if you know about the mark of the beast, this is quite, quite uh, scary. By the way, this was reported in the London Times, 42498, reported in the Liberator newspaper, March, June, 98, page 4, goes on and on. Now, this Pope has also uh, ordered his cardinals, he didn't have to order them, they wanted to do it, Cardinal Bernadine, the late Cardinal Bernadine, now he's been replaced by another cardinal, up in Chicago, assisted with his money and his time,